Unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? You have a coach? I don't have a clue. <laughs> I don't have a clue. <laughs> so you see, I'm just copying stuff, but I hope I can do it in the future. Everybody has a problem. Like, probably you have a problem if you can perform immediately. I have a problem. I definitely have a problem. <laughs> but he's right. Like, actually, genius. Mm. Wow, genius. Mm. You, found, you found a treasure somewhere. And nobody knows about the treasure. If you want to beat someone like Gordon Ryan, that's a hard question. I think we need to master them. It's, it's a must because everybody plays. You're, you're doing a better job of holding the interview <laughs> than me. <laughs> So yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Where should I look? There? There? Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, okay. so we're live. Good to see you. <laughs> ah! Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, <good. laughs> been a while. Been a while. Okay, so my first question. We're just going to get right into it. First question, Dima, are you secretly a Bitcoin billionaire? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Um, so um, what have you been up to since last time we saw each other? Yeah, uh, a lot has happened. So... Last time we saw each other, I think it's where I started my coaching career, right? Right, right, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was after a lot of failed attempts of being an athlete because <laughs> my body just didn't hold up. <laughs> Luckily, it's just not holding up when I prepare myself for uh, competitions, uh -huh. then it breaks. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking like, okay, I will listen to the universe and I will start using my talents as a coach. And yeah, since then I helped Joseph win the ADCC trials. I think that's what brought me to the map. Mm -hmm. And since then, a lot of athletes contacted me and wanted to work with me. And yeah, really cool for me. Yeah. So I had to pick like the right athletes that I like, that I think are cool, that have a future with me together, because I think we could bond really cool. That's what you see with me and my athletes now. And yeah, since then, every day, Pohada, but from the coach's perspective, right? Like right. Uh, never sleeping, watching a lot of tape, helping a lot of people. And the thing is, before that, I only had to concentrate on Linus and Joseph. So this was way easier. And now you have 10 to 15 people where you actually have to focus on them, not only on the rule sets, not only on the game, not only on the trends. And yeah, it's hard, but it's fun. So yeah. Mm, that's good. That's good. You still, I think you had the same hand injury yes. when we first saw each other. Yeah, yes. it's been persistent. Yeah. yeah. And when we met, um, like Joseph told me before, and he's like, yeah, I'm bringing this guy who's like coaching me. And I was like, what? You have a coach? I was like, okay, interesting. And then it's so crazy because like two months later, he won trials. I was yes. like, holy shit. <laughs> yes. And then I saw your name everywhere. I was like, oh, I know that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Um, so I know you told me, I don't know if this is a secret, but I know you told me you've been working with Owen Jones and he actually won mm -hmm. trials also. Mm -hmm. um, would you mind sharing some of the other athletes you've been working with? Yes. Unless that's like secret. No, or... no, no. I think now you can go uh, to my Instagram and you can look mm -hmm. at every athlete. So Owen Jones, actually, I was so impressed by him at the trials. Yeah, and because. Agree he does something that I try to achieve, finding trends. So mm -hmm. I think he does a good job of it. And yeah, I immediately want to work with him. Not really like, oh, I need to work with him, but I was impressed. Mm -hmm. And then he was training with Joseph at the B team. Mm -hmm. So we called with each other and he's like, bro, I want the same treatment as Joseph has. I want the same treatment because he saw what I was doing with Joseph. Uh -huh. uh, not many people know this, but right now, basically Joseph is training I wouldn't say 100% to what I tell him, but probably 50, 60, 70, maybe even 80. So I have a game plan for him, how I want his jiu-jitsu to be for the next ADCC. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I gave him a couple of things that he need to work on and Owen saw this and everything worked out, even on the best guys at B team. Mm -hmm. So I think he liked it and that's where we started talking. And I was like, okay, this was the time actually where my hand was fine. So I'm like, okay, I will help you, but only if you come to Berlin so I can train with you because I also want to get better, right? And yeah, then he agreed to it. I brought him here and yeah, we started training together. But unfortunately my hand got broken again before that. So yeah, yeah, but that's good as um, for the coach perspective because I, I could watch him the whole time. I could yeah. watch everybody. Yeah. And I think you don't have this anywhere else in jiu-jitsu right. where you actually have a coach that is really concentrating on you. Like I sweat the same, even like only from coaching. It's mm -hmm. the same like if I train because I have so many people there. I want them to do good. I need to be there left, right. Need to address everything. But sometimes uh, I do too much. So yeah, I will get better at this. I'm still very young to the sport. I'm not here like Dana for 20, 30 years. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, Dana Hurd never didn't just show up on the scene. He was coaching for like 20 years yes. and then people discovered him. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so are there any other athletes that you're kind of aware of bef- that you may or may not be working with? Like, I remember when you told me uh, you worked with Joseph, um, you met him at B Team. And I think people, if they've seen interviews with Dima, they, they'll kind of know that whole story. Mm-hmm. But you told me that you saw him and you thought he was like such a special athlete. Are there any other athletes that you've seen traveling the world that you may or may not be working with that are kind of like yet unknown? Mm-hmm. So before that, I still didn't answer your question, who I work with. Oh, right, 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 <laughs> right, right, right. besides Owen, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So I have Margot Cicerelli here, right, and right. Mm-hmm. I think she's amazing, actually. Like, you never know how a person is until you met the person, and then you talk with them, chill with them for one week. Mm-hmm. So she's very amazing, not only in jiu-jitsu, but also her personality. So I like to work with her because she's obsessed, like Joseph, like mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Like, we meet we meet up before the actual practice and then she just drills for one hour, one and a half hours and I'm just sitting there uh, watching it, helping her a little bit. She asks me things, I, I help her and I think we come up with cool stuff. Brianna St. Marie also like, she's probably the most accomplished athlete in my, mm-hmm. like, right. uh, in my little group because she was already second at ADCC. Yeah. But I think this ADCC, especially the women divisions, it will be so more. It will be so high level. Like right, yeah. you can't even compare it to the divisions before. Right. So yeah, I'm very happy that I can work with such high level women. Like mm-hmm. not every coach has this. Again, I'm here yeah, on the scene since a couple of months. So even if I'm doing it day by day for a couple of years, and from the male perspective, like Owen Jones, Joseph. So yeah. I also had Jason Rao, but. I have Jason Rao like in a small amount. It's not like I'm coaching everything of him. Mm-hmm. I'm just, let's say it like this. If you go now to Vanguard, you see two positional rounds that they do. And it's because I want him to do it. Mm-hmm. So he's preparing for ADCC trials, but technically like he's doing his own thing. So uh, we met uh, in New York at a mutual friend of ours. And when we met, uh, Dima actually invited me to go stay at his place mm-hmm. in Vanguard or in Long Island to train at Vanguard. Mm-hmm. Completely free, like super nice. And we literally just met um what do you think are some of the reasons then like why all these like high level athletes are so like uh eager to work with you i don't have a clue (laughs) (laughs) i don't have a clue (laughs) like there there was a comment at instagram what are you paying the athletes to to give you that much clout and i answered like one pirated instructional a month (laughs) Uh, i really don't know like a good friend of mine max uh, has nothing to do with jujitsu but he like told me, Dima, like you're just a cool dude. Like people like to follow you, mm. and I think that's the reason. I don't even know if it's because of my like jujitsu knowledge. Like I love jujitsu, and mm-hmm. I think I'm pretty knowledgeable because I just take eight, nine hours a day just for jujitsu. Mm-hmm. M- maybe even more. We can count this today. So I think that's the reason. And obviously, they saw what I could do with Joseph. But Joseph already was so good. But let's be honest, he couldn't show it in competition. Right, you, you can look at the competition and you see him. He's really good there, but it's not near how he is in training. In training, he's way better. So maybe people think, oh, okay, if I can work with Dima now, he can do the same for me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I can. Let's see. But I will. I will give it my best. I and again, a question that we didn't answer. Uh, sorry, it's it's my fault. Like athletes that I see around the mm-hmm. world. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're doing a better job of holding the interview <laughs> than me. <laughs> sorry, it's just in my head. Like, uh, uh, yeah. Um, so. I think there's a guy, his name is Pavel. He actually beat Meras uh, recently, like a couple of days ago. And he beat Marcin, mm-hmm. and he's only 88 kilograms, and both of them are 99. Meras won ADCC trials already, mm-hmm. and he was in ADCC and 219. He subbed everybody mm-hmm. in his uh, division and finished the final with a dog bar from top. So very impressive. Yeah. And Pavel, this guy, he's, he's an up-and-comer. He's training his whole life, I think, or for a long period of time. And he also beat David Asari in Worlds, I think. He's a purple belt. He's a purple belt, wow. exactly. Yeah, I've, I think he's pretty amazing. Uh-huh. And yeah, I hope to meet him in ADCC trials just to see him and have yeah. a talk with him yeah. because he's actually, I'm pretty impressed by him. Mm-hmm. That's, okay, that's cool. Um, let's move on then to talking about like, um, like this gap. Maybe the best way to preface this is like, you know, Guy Mendez from AOJ, mm-hmm. right? So he's been pretty famously uh, saying in interviews that like, if you ever hear of a guy who's like a gym monster but can't perform, that's a myth. That guy's actually not that good. And Guy Mendez is, will very famously kind of say this and preach this. 
Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And then kind of a follow up, like what are your thoughts on like Nikki Ryan and his apparent like gap between competition mm -hmm. and uh, the room? So he says, if you can't perform, you're actually not that good. Basically, yeah. Mm. Uh, so I think he's right. And it, or let's say it like this, we could interpret it uh, in two ways. One is you're not actually that good in competition, right? Because mm -hmm. these are the results, like right. you can't perform in competition. So it means in this environment, you're maybe not that great. And okay, yeah, fair point. But I think if you're good in the training room, um, there's a problem somewhere if you can't perform. Okay, everybody has a problem. Like probably you have a problem if you can't perform immediately. I have a problem. I definitely have a problem. Like when I was an active competitor, I needed 10 tournaments until I'm there. And then I could even uh, compete better than I could train. But before that, I sucked. Mm -hmm. So was it because I wasn't actually that good the 10 competitions before? No, just because I had a problem. And the problem was adapting to this competition, the whole competition thing. So that was my problem. Joseph's problem was that he wasn't confident in certain uh, styles. So we had to adapt to this. And there are also natural competitors, like the Rods, like... Right. But they also would have a problem if they wouldn't compete their whole teenage life because course, that's yeah. what they did, right? right Every yeah. wrestler did yeah, this, so yeah. no wrestler will have any problem with that. And let's go to Nikki Ryan. I think the problem of Nikki Ryan is the same as from Jason Rao. The problem lays in training. So they are training comfortably, too comfortable, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Like, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they go in there and they do what they are really good at. So it's hard to challenge them to say, hey, listen, you maybe should do things that you're not comfortable at, especially with the heart rate. They like to stay in the medium and low heart rate. Uh -huh. So if they go to a competition, they can't go higher because if they go higher, they are a little bit afraid that they will gas and then they are gassing and then they can't perform how they used to. But I think if you put up the intensity and pair them with good people, it's a quick fix, a really quick fix. And you actually can see it with Nicky Ryan. Everybody's telling him, listen, you, you don't have a good gas tank. Like even Craig told us, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, you don't so have funny. a good gas Craig's tank. Craig's saying that so, is so funny. Yeah. So if you tell it to someone <laughs> multiple times, it will get in your head and yeah. you'll be like, okay, let me, let me try to finish them quick, maybe with leg locks or let me uh, be conservative. And then in the end, try to pump it out. But I think that's not the right idea of training. So I think <laughs> if they would um, train uncomfortably, so it's more un uncomfortable for them. And Jason is doing it now with the positional rounds. Mm -hmm. And I think Nikki could do this too. But again, it's only an assumption. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but that's how I see the things. So mm -hmm. Guy Mendes is right and wrong, in my opinion, depending on where you're looking at. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good answer. Um, so what kind of, what would that like high intensity protocol look like? Would you ask for them to train high intensity every day or like a few times a week? Like, what do you think is kind of needed for those guys? Yeah. So you can train high intensity every day. I right. think you get injured. So if you train more than once high intensity, two or three times, this will be already amazing. Mm -hmm. But people don't understand what I mean by high intensity because a lot of people do shark tanks, for example. Mm. I'm not the biggest fan of shark tanks, oh, except okay. you already have good cardio. Because what the shark tank will do, they will just push you to your red zone mm -hmm. and then you're done. Mm -hmm. And then after that, even a white belt can perform good on you. Mm -hmm. So they have to lower their technique to match your technique and you are basically surviving. What I want to do is make you go to this very high heart rate. Mm. So it's, I don't want to see other people bringing you there. I want you going there. Mm. So you have to actively go to heart rate four, heart rate five. If people don't know what it is, it's like terms that runners use. I use yeah. it here for training yeah. too. It's like, I think above 160 beats a minute, heartbeats a minute, something like this. You can look it up but I want them to be very active and push the heart rate. So even if they go against a white belt, I don't want them to be like this. I want them to go all out and push themselves to this high rate and then stay there. I think this is the best uh, practice to do it. That's what wrestlers are doing. So mm -hmm. we should do the same. And in case of Nikki Ryan, I would do it actually every day, but only one round. Then the next uh, weeks, I would do maybe four days a week, mm -hmm. two rounds. Mm -hmm. And then we lower the um, intensity or no, no, we lower, the, yeah, we lower the frequency, volume, and we higher the intensity. Right, yeah. and then in the end, you have someone that can do it for two days, very high the whole day. Yeah. Mm. That's an interesting protocol. I have to look into that. We need, your, we need um, some more uh, posts or videos on like, your whole zone one, zone two 
protocol stuff. Yeah, maybe I've been seeing like trickles here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like maybe, but the thing is just, I don't have too much time. Like mm. even right now, right. like I mean, we're getting into like the big competition season. Yes. Not only that, like, because I'm so early and up and coming, I have so, I have so much to do mm. to be a little bit more chill in the later phases. Mm. Right. So right now I will stay here at the gym until nine. And then I go home. I have a girlfriend at home. I have a dog at home. I have to spend a little time with them, maybe 30 minutes, maybe, maybe 30 minutes. <laughs> Then I have to watch tape, uh, I have clients, I have the people here, I have everything coming up, I have seminars. So I'm basically awake until 2 or 3 a.m. and I'm only doing jiu-jitsu. So the only time I'm not thinking about jiu-jitsu is when I wake up, go out with my dog and come to the gym. So it's basically two hours. So actually it's like if I sleep eight hours, 14 hours jiu-jitsu a day. Mm -hmm. So I need to be, I need to find time to make videos like this, mm -hmm. but I hope I can do it in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, good luck. <laughs> uh, okay, then t let's stay on the topic of training protocols. So um, the ecological approach has been something that's been really popular. Um, mm -hmm. As someone who like trained with Greg a little bit, I think something a lot of people are missing is they see the, con the constraints led approach, which is like half of the ecological approach, but they miss out on the dynamical systems theory, which like to sum up is basically Greg's idea that um, and he didn't coin this, but it's the idea that there are no positions, like there's no, there's no such thing as a triangle. There's no such thing as outside Ashi. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, do positions exist? I need to look into it more because the most quest, uh, the, how can I put it? Like a lot of people are asking me about the ecological mm -hmm. approach. Mm -hmm. I don't even know yet what it is, mm -hmm. but I, I'm getting an idea of uh, listening about it. Yeah. And I think actually a lot of things that I do are similar to the ecological approach. I actually agree, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we probably think the same a little bit, more or less. But can you elaborate? What is he meaning by there are no positions? Um, I think Greg's biggest uh, thing is that, like, if you ask one person what is outside Ashi and ask another person what is outside Ashi and you ask them to show it to you and you take a picture, those pictures will look different. Maybe the alignment of the legs will be a little bit different. The alignment of the hips will be a little bit different. And, he talk, and dynamic system theory, which isn't Greg's thing, but it's mm -hmm. this whole idea that like we are doing a very fluid sport and a fluid activity. And just because you can take a picture of what it looks like, it doesn't actually describe what's actually happening. Because mm -hmm. what's actually happening is one guy is trying to force something on another person and mm -hmm. that person's trying to force something on another person. So mm -hmm. talking about it in static terms, like triangle or outside Ashi, it doesn't make sense. Does that make sense to you? So instead what he would say is more like... Um, Control the control one leg with your entire with all four of your limbs. Mm -hmm. Or if he was passing, he would say something like, "Make sure their feet aren't touching you." And that's how actually he talks about jiu-jitsu with his guys. They don't actually use terms like mm -hmm. toriando or mm -hmm. camping or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's interesting, and I think he's right in a certain sense. But in the end, it comes to vocabulary, so we understand each other. So maybe if you tell your student, "Have your legs on the hip." It's harder to understand than if I say outside Ashi. You know what I mean? Mm. But I agree with him. That's a good point because I see it like the standpoint is good and I have a similar um, uh, thinking because I'm not looking at guard passing. I'm not looking at right. outside mm -hmm. passing. I'm not looking at tight passing. <clears throat> I'm looking at control, connection, base. That's how I call the right. games that I play because right. he also plays games. Yeah. So it's an interesting thought and he's definitely not wrong there. Let's say it like this. Yeah. But still we need to somehow communicate with okay. each other. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, yeah. But he's right. Like actually now I have to think more. So I, <laughs> I need to, uh, I need to sacrifice more time from the day. I will only sleep now six I feel hours like I gave, today. I gave you a Thank curse. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, um, yeah, I, I like I've reached out to you once in a while a couple times mm -hmm. um, and you've given me some tips and it does seem like you see things a little bit more plainly mm -hmm. and like I feel like it's not under the lens of like, okay, throw by it's more kind of just like get under their elbow or something like that. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's probably a lot of the value that a lot of the athletes that work with you mm -hmm. will probably see. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so I want to go back to Nikki Ryan and mm -hmm. kind of talk about the dark horse that isn't actually a dark horse if you follow Gi Jitsu, but um, Elijah Dorsey. Mm -hmm. What do you think were some of the things that made him so successful in his run? He actually just won European Gi also mm -hmm. um, and his specific match against Nikki Ryan. Yeah. Um, also, he's the guy that I was impressed with because he mastered the term connection. So if I talk about connection, it's about who can oppose his will in terms of jujitsu? 
um, on top of mm -hmm. the other guy. So let's say he doesn't want to play jiu-jitsu, then you can't play jiu-jitsu with him. And he was doing it at the medium heart rate the whole time until he saw Nicky break. And then he, right. yeah, then he yeah. put it up and then he decided when to do jiu-jitsu. So this is pretty smart. He can control his heart rate pretty good. Uh, for Gi and no Gi, I think the best people in the world, especially in competitions, are very good in it. And he's very good at not getting connected. But if you can get a hold of him, that's where, that's where the negative part starts from his game. Not that he's not great. Obviously, he's a world champion caliber athlete. But it's not as great as his connection part. So if you can get a hold of him, I He's much less fluid. Exactly. That's where you can do better. I trained with him, so no shade on yeah. Eli. No, 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 no. <laughs> He's great. He's, <laughs> He's great. Just we need to point out every right. yeah. every aspect uh -huh. of the game. And but again, because he's so great in the term connection, it's so hard to get there. Like even someone like Nicky Ryan, who is arguably one of the best in the world, and he mm -hmm. looked great in the tournament, couldn't get a hold of him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed by him, and I think he has a great future ahead of him. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, <clears throat> so you talked about he controls his heart rate well, and he kind of is deciding when to do it. So do you think that comes in his training? So like going back to your zone zone training and heart rate training, do you think it has to do with like let's say an athlete who is choosing to red zone themselves and stay there? Do you think that skill set that Eli has will come with? Yes, I I, I think this is connected. I I don't know how he trains. But I can imagine he's doing jiu-jitsu since he's young and he yeah, probably he had to do well. drills like <laughs> <laughs> that everybody says is stupid. It is stupid in terms of technique, right? But it's good in terms of heart rate. So you have to push the heart rate the whole time and then you will have an easier time doing jiu-jitsu, even if this <laughs> will not give you anything technically. Mm -hmm. But I think this is great, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I kind of want to talk a little bit more about um, ADCC and the divisions, but before that, um, I want to talk about the Saitia brothers. You put me onto them and like their their beautiful wrestling, and now I'm like addicted to watching them. Um, but one thing I want to bring out is that it's such a highly technically demanding style. Do you think it's a good style to emulate for a jiu jitsu athlete who wants to add wrestling to their game? I think if you look at Saitiev, especially oh, the first, younger sorry. brother. Are you a Borislav or are you a Adam fan? If you had to pick, I I I can't pick one because <laughs> the thing is. Um, Adam is more beautiful to watch. I agree. He's I, much I, more fluid. Yeah, I would yeah. love to be Adam. Yeah. But my body type suits more. Boris. Uh, yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's my take on it. Um, in terms of their style, especially Adam, if you look at him, he's still ahead of the game. Still. Yeah, if, I agree. It's yeah. it's like you found you found a treasure somewhere and nobody knows about the treasure and it comes out pretty slowly and slowly so his style is made for adcc it's you made think so for, yes i think so mm. he's not only the thing is he's not shooting too much he doesn't shoot he doesn't shoot yeah exactly uh -huh. but if you shoot on him he will counter oh, you over. <laughs> and he will not only counter you he will pin you yeah he uses front headlocks in a very good style where he also traps the arm. So if he puts you down, you don't have too much time to turn to mm -hmm, the turtle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's the master of breaking down the four point. And I think four point is more mm -hmm. important than turtle. And nobody can put him down to turtle from his four point. Right. So amazing. Yeah. Uh, if he does you, a lot of, um, he does a lot of, uh, I mean, his biggest famous throw is his uh, Ouchigari or inside trip. Yes. Um, and he has a pretty decent wizard kick, which has both throws have quite a bit of a technical demand. Do you think it's worth investing in? I think we need to master them. It's, mm. it's a must because mm. everybody plays... Underhooks. Yeah, underhooks. Yeah. And I don't want to give too much away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he after, told me a little bit before. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to give too much away. So <laughs> after Joseph's Grand Prix at uh -huh. the 23rd of March in uh -huh. Wales, uh -huh. watch this. After this, we can have another interview yeah. and then I talk about this uh, yeah, a little bit more specific. You guys should definitely uh, keep an eye out because he gave me the ideas a few months ago and I've been working on them and yeah, they're pretty great ideas. It's yeah. good, right? Yeah, no, it's really good. Yeah, I feel very confident in those positions and I safe to say I actually prefer the overhook these days. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Me yeah. Too. Um, okay, so the fun part I kind of wanted to talk about is um, who do you have as the favorites for, uh, let's talk about the European 77 kilo division because it seems like that's like the craziest division at trials right now, like in any in any region. Mm -hmm. Who do you have as a favorite for winning that? That's a hard question because obviously the top three guys, right. they could beat each other yeah, like yeah. Uh -huh. in a heartbeat, like uh, Matthias, Chichinsky, 
Taza and Tommy Langacker. Mm -hmm. Like these three are, one of them will probably win, right? Yeah. Or All I three guys could, could also make it to the second day of ADCC. Like that's how good I think they are. Yeah. I, I agree. Like the European 77 division is crazy. Yeah, it's like, insane. And if you add Joseph to this, then you have like, <laughs> yeah. like a massacre. And that's what we saw the last time. <sighs> if I had to pick one of them, I can't pick one of them. <laughs> I, I just Very political. Can't. Yeah, no, no, I just can't. Like, it, maybe one of you should start working with Dima and then he'll pick you. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good thing that also Denaha does. He's never picking, right? He's never... Mm, that's I, true. I think as a coach, it's, it's a good idea to yeah, not to pick. to be more objective about it. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. I agree. Yeah. And I, I can talk about the skill sets more mm. than about who I think would win. Then who, which skill set of the three do you think is most suited for ADCC? And not just ADCC, because I think there's a very big distinction between the round, the elimination rounds and the final. Because in the final, you cannot pull, you know? So who do you think has the best uh, skill set for the rule set? For both rule sets, uh, Taza. Yeah. Because I think Taza... He is, can wrestle. Yeah, he, he trains this rule set right, yeah, daily, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, so they yeah. do a great job at New Wave, and that's why I think, like, technically, mm -hmm. he has the most complete package out of them. Mm -hmm. But if the other uh, two can force him into their game, he could right, have yeah. a bad day. Yeah, their funnels are so strong. Yeah, that's definitely the dilemma. Okay, so let's move on to the uh, worlds of ADCC. So 66 has a similar dilemma where it's Gabe Souza, Baby Shark, and Pato. Who do you think, uh, could you give maybe the pros and cons of all three, and who do you think has the best rule set for winning it all? Mm. Or who has a skill set that's more suited for ADCC? The champ, Baby Shark. Yeah. The champ. I, I already knew, because I asked yeah. it beforehand, but yeah. yeah like, <laughs> even before the division started, like at ADCC, I was thinking that Baby Shark could win it, even after he won the trials, mm. because he looked complete to me. Right. And, and he, fought, he fought Pato. Yes. Trials. Yeah. yes, he's complete. He's technically very good. He's tactically very good. Mm -hmm. Like the thing with the turtle where he, <coughs> where he was going away, genius. Mm -hmm. Wow, genius. Mm -hmm. And he decided when to engage. So, mm -hmm. But he has everything. He has connection, he has base, so it will be very hard to beat him. But I think this ADCC, there are a couple of guys, like uh, Dorian, will be a big problem. I think that'll be interesting to watch. And if everything works out, like I think, with Owen Jones, like we have a tight training program until ADCC. Could be good for mm. us. Mm. Okay. So then what do you think is the skill set required to beat somebody like Baby Shark he, cause, because he's so well-rounded and to go along with that, not just tactically, like, but yeah, tactically, how would you beat him? And what is the, like, let's say like top three skills you think you would need to execute that, those tactics against Baby Shark? Yeah. So the thing with someone like Baby Shark, so you have the best one mm -hmm. at this weight division, because he's good in everything, you need to look at the rule sets, right? And you need to look at, um, um, let's say, like history of the tournament. If you want to beat Baby Shark, you need to be able to put him down and to hold him down. That's it. Mm -hmm. You need these two. That's it. Yeah, that's a good point. He, he had some good wrestling scrambles, like with Josh and with Gabe Souza, but yeah, none of them could ever keep him down. Yeah. That's a good point. <clears throat> um, okay, so then... The real fun one. Um, let's move on to Gordon Ryan. Mm -hmm. Tactically, in an ADCC style rule set, let's say for the division, and then we'll say for the super fight if it's a different answer. What do you think is like the best strategy and tactics to beat him? And what do you think are the skill sets required to to like enforce those tactics? Okay, I think I can't answer this. Because this is going because Dima loves watching Gordon Ryan. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, the thing is, why I can't comment on this? Maybe there are some news in the future. And maybe I have a couple of guys who could potentially fight him. So mm. obviously I don't want mm. to give anything away. Okay, fair. But okay. I will still try to answer your question as good as I can by reviewing his, um, his style, his tactics, his technique. He's complete. Like, Gordon Ryan is complete. Understatement I, of the century. I, I, yeah, yeah, understand. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's amazing. I, I love to watch him. And... Probably most of you know that I'm a B team guy, right? I'm I'm B team guy, and I think I will go more into the direction of B team. But I can't lie, and Gordon Ryan is just amazing. Like a lot of him, or a lot of his style is what helped me, like even back then. So if you want to beat someone like Gordon Ryan, you need to have the perfect day. You need to have the perfect strategy, and you need to have two main things to yeah to fight his style. And these things have not much to do with actual jiu-jitsu technique. So I can't give them out, but yeah, I'm a big fan. He's amazing, and I hope uh, he gets healthy very soon so we can test 
what I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I th yeah, but to beat him, it's it's the hardest task you can ask for in all of jujitsu history. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Just two more questions then. One, who do you see winning under 99 at uh, ADCC Worlds? Hmm. I think under 99. Kainan is in there, right? Yeah, Kainan and Marigali. Marigali is in there. It doesn't seem like Craig's going to do it, but like we could throw him in there. Yeah. He, but he said he's going to do 88 if he, if he did. Yeah, I think we don't see Craig in 99 yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Marigali would be a good pick. Yeah. Kainan would also be a good pick. So let's go with, with, uh, with these two. The thing is, the Kainan you saw at who's number one will not be the Kainan that you see at ADCC. But the Marigal you saw it, who's number one, you'll see a way better version of him Agreed. tactically, but yeah. probably Kainan will be a little bit stronger at ADCC. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a wink, wink. <laughs> yeah, this is a hard matchup, but I think, uh, yeah, everybody of these two could win it. And let's actually think about who's also at 99. Okay, and this is the last one. This is a fun one, a little mm -hmm. bit of a fun fact for people who don't know this about Dima. Um, why don't you watch instructionals? Okay, okay. <laughs> so I watch instructionals, uh -huh. but... As someone who used to watch them religiously, right? Yes, yes. Back then I watched probably only instructionals every day, a lot of hours. And then I stopped. So why do I stop? Because I figured out that if you watch instructionals, you will only get as good as the people that did the instructionals. And then you will probably come up with your own stuff, but they already did. Mm -hmm. So I figured this out when I was at B-Team the first time. Before that, I could oppose my will to almost everyone in Europe because nobody was uh, good in leg lock entanglements, cross archery and stuff like that. So then I go there, and if I was going into cross archery, especially with guys like Ethan, they will crush you even more. Mm -hmm. So I figured, okay, if I play their game that they've been doing for years, how can I think that I can beat them? Mm -hmm. And that's why I started to understand I need to find my own systems. Basically, that's what Dana was doing. Uh, that's... That was what he was doing, right? So he was searching for things that nobody else know, trends. And then I started watching things that nobody was watching. And if I watch instructionals, I watch instructionals of people that nobody knows of, or if the instructional is not popular. And then I try to immediately uh, do a new system out of the things that I saw. So you can surprise people. Mm -hmm. And while you can surprise people, they have to think about it. And in this time, you build your whole base, your mm -hmm. real jujitsu, mm -hmm. so to speak. Like Danaher with the leg locks, but then he was secretly working on back takes, and exactly. he was secretly working on passing. Exactly. So yeah. you see, I'm just copying stuff. I yeah. like like every good coach will do, right? Mm -hmm. We, and I think the thing about me is I can speak Russian a little bit, so I watch a lot of Dagestani wrestling. Mm -hmm. And most if I ever of, ask him about r wrestling, he always sends me some like rest, some Russian wrestler. I'm yes. Like, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, so a lot of stuff that I'm developing right now, it's more actually wrestling than jujitsu and holding people down because I think this is underdeveloped. And I think I have the data that not everybody can access. Mm. So I hope that my students can do this. And while they try to figure this out, we can work on their jiu-jitsu. Because I'm, again, I'm quietly new. Not quietly. I'm, I'm fairly new in the sport. So I will need 10, 15 years to have um, like 10, 20, 30, 40 athletes that I built myself. Right mm -hmm. now, I only have Linus and Misha. Not many people know about him because... Oh. I actually met him briefly in Taiwan. For real? Yeah. Did yeah, you yeah. roll like very, with him? No, no, we didn't get to roll, but I saw him with Joseph in Taiwan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's a 66 guy. Oh, okay. And yeah. his wrestling's amazing. So mm -hmm. that was what we've been working on, especially in MMA. So I prepped him for MMA, actually. I think I'm more talented in MMA than yeah. Jiu Jitsu. And after six months, he could hang with the Dagestani guys in the ring. Like in oh, the that's sick. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And they were like, where do you train? How do you know it? And he's like, just go to Dima. But they, they didn't understand it. So nobody came, luckily for me, because I'm, my schedule is full right now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's basically it. I, I think instructions are good, but if you want to prep your people to do great stuff, to do stuff that nobody knows of, you need to build your own systems. Right. And this is really hard. I, I can assure you that this is really, really tough. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thanks, Dima. Where can the people find you? Um, in the social media, in Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, I changed my name from Dima LWB. Mm -hmm. who, for everyone that is asking me on a daily basis. Yeah, I saw that. I was yeah. like, who's this new guy who follows me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Lightweight Baby. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Lightweight Baby. But now it's Dima Morovani. So, yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. Thanks for doing this.